This is going to be the unboxing of the EVGA NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1060 SC. Now you might go, wow, 1060, that's a pretty old card. Why don't you get a 1070 or 1080? This is because I don't need to do high performance gaming and I'm not ready to spend a couple thousand dollars on a gaming rig. This is mainly for getting enough GPU power in order to do 4K video editing. Now I noticed on my Dell XPS 15 that has a GTX 1050 graphics card with four gigabyte of video RAM. That one sort of chokes a little bit when I do 4K video editing but it's not limited by the graphics card it's actually limited by the heat given off by the cpu it gets too hot and then it has to throttle down the cpu so my desktop won't have the same problem because it has a really really big cpu fan currently i own an xps 8700 desktop and that graphics card that comes with it it's really really cheap and it only has about one gigabyte of video ram so that's not enough to do video editing on 4k videos so this thing normally retails for 260 dollars and if you look at camel camel camel.com you'll see that it went as low as $220. Right now it's about $300. I bought it just a couple days ago for $310. I anticipated to keep on going down because the interest in mining cryptocurrency has fallen a bit. Over the course of the next year or so, I anticipate it going down maybe $10 every single month. So maybe six months later, it's gonna be valued at $240. Now, why would I pay more than this price for this thing? It's kind of stupid. It's not something I would normally do. And I've been eyeing a graphics card for quite a while now, several months now, and the graphics card pricing just won't budge. And I'm like, well, I really do need it in order to do my video editing for YouTube work. So I just think of it, well, I'm just going to spend this $50 extra. I know I'm buying it at a premium for about $50. So I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna do it. So now let me unbox this and show you the very fine details of the video card. I wanna talk about the details in the card itself from an engineering point of view, rather than saying, oh, I wanna buy this and I wanna put it in my PC and stuff. So let's just get to it. Nothing else inside. Here's a little emblem thing that you can stick on your computer. The little cable. Why do they need to put it in a bag like this? I don't know. Two four pin thing to a six pin thing in case you need something like this. The user guide. Display driver installation disc. HDMI. Apparently companies that use HDMI, you have to license this. They have to pay a hefty fee to HDMI in order to use this interface. What is this? Minimum system requirements. Hardware installation. Who is this built? What are these stickers or something? These are ugly stickers though, man. Maybe they need to make it a bit smaller. I think I prefer maybe if they put their logo just like this, you know, just a whole bunch of these, it would look a lot better than these ugly stickers. Superior hardware. What is this? EVGA, okay. I don't know who would actually use this and hang it in their room. Okay, this is all the extra accessories. Here is the thing, it comes in a little bubble wrap. Their bag has their own logo on it, that's great. I need to remove all these stickers. It says remove protective film before use. All right. Little did people know, there's also a protective film on here, right? Yes, there is. One on this. Nope, no film over here. There's a little guard thing over here. I'm not sure if this is absolutely necessary, but it's good to keep it on to protect it, I guess. Over here are these little cover things. I think I'll put most of them back in here because I don't want dust to get in there if I'm not using them. That's the HDMI, DVI, display port, the little fan. Well, I guess that's plastic fan there. Over here is a cable that goes to the fan. You can see it snake from in there all the way to the center of the fan. What I noticed right away is that these ribs are not made out of copper. As we know, copper is a very good conductor of heat. If they're using a different material, it may not conduct heat as well, but perhaps they don't need to conduct heat as well. As long as it can remove sufficient heat from the GPU to keep it cool enough, that should be okay. You don't always have to have all the best materials. That's what engineering is for. You use the cheapest type of material that will do the job. I do see that the heat pipes are copper. So at least going from the GPU to this heat sink, 
they're using copper. Now let's take a look at all of this thing and what I notice. I mean, here's the FCC logo. It means they had to go through an FCC testing to make sure that it's not causing harmful interference. It might have to test under certain frequency bands in order to pass this card. This is especially true because this card is running at such a high frequency. They might put this card in the computer to test to see if it emits uh, radio waves beyond an energy level that they allow. We see that it's made in China over here. You might obviously be able to tell that underneath this area is the GPU itself. There are two diodes over here, which basically means that energy only goes one way. Whenever you have something like this, the band means it's a diode. And then you also have all these little tiny little things speckled all over the place. These are usually capacitors. Capacitors usually in this type of board, they sort of store energy locally. So whatever logic devices in there, uses a little bit of energy. It won't drag down the power supply. Now, why do you need to do this? These things are usually called decoupling capacitors because if you just have one line, for example, going from here to here and no decoupling capacitor over here, if you draw a lot of current through this line, it's gonna cause the voltage over here to drop. And usually these things, they require a very constant voltage. That's what the capacitor is for because if that logic thing draws a little bit of electricity, it can draw from the capacitor instead of waiting for the energy to traverse from you know the computer over here into that thing. So it serves as like a localized reservoir for little bits of energy. So all of these things have their own tiny little power supplies. So it's kind of like their own little uh, localized unit that'll give them a little bit of energy uh, as they need it. Over here, you quickly see eight general locations over here. I'm sure these are the video RAM that supplies this GPU over here. There are eight more over here and also eight more over here. This card is six gigabytes. So um, it does need a lot of chips to supply all that video RAM. Whole bunch of other stuff over here. I can't really read every single thing, but I do know that whenever it's multiple pins like these, these are integrated circuit chips inside. There's gonna be a lot of logic and stuff. Maybe they're driving the HDMI, the display port, the DVI or whatnot. We see that these things eventually lead to the DVI over here. Here is a six pin connector and you'll usually notice that it needs some strain relief over here. There's two posts over here so that when you're plugging in your six pin connector, these serves as like a mechanical backing so that you're not putting all the pressure on these actual solder connections over here. I found some more stuff that you can peel off. <laughs> Perhaps that will help a little bit more with cooling because the less layers, the better. Here, over here is the video RAM. You can see in between over here, they use some block of thermal transfer thing. It looks like some sort of thermal foam or whatnot. I guess they're using this instead of thermal paste. Over here inside, you see some electrolytic capacitors. Now, why are there so many different kinds of capacitors? It's because electrolytic capacitors apply a lot more capacity than ceramic capacitors, which are these little tiny things that you see sprinkled all throughout the board. These electrolytic capacitors likely decouples this card from your computer. So it's gonna draw power from your computer. It's gonna store some of it in there. And then from here, it would supply the rest of the card. So from what it looks like, you see a whole bunch of data lines over here. Each one of them is one connection, but you can see it comes in a pair. So likely they're transferring data differentially, which means there's gonna be two lines per pair. And then every time one of the line goes up, the other one line goes down. So it's kind of like a telephone line. Uh, but much, much faster. So that's all I have to say for this card right now. Hope you guys enjoyed this. So thanks for watching this video. I hope this was enjoyable and giving some insights from my engineering background. Today, I wanna share with you guys a piece of mail I got from someone. It's not a real name or anything. It's a business name, Programmable Solution. So let me open it and see what's inside. It still boggles my mind why anyone would spend a whole 50 cents nowadays for this forever stamp in order to send me anything at all. What the heck is this? Hey, Beat the Bush, I've been watching your YouTube channel and think it's very good, but only kidding about the but. I just saw your video about negative YouTube comments and thought it might be funny to throw in a but. <laughs> I have developed a learning tool that uses Xilinx XPGA and Texas Instrument Microcontroller to model and control a buck power supply. Okay, here is what I think about this project. So the project in itself, in terms of playing with FPGAs and microcontrollers and buck power supply, I feel like 
Well, unless I have some purpose to use a buck power supply, then there's no motivation for me to try and do it. I always feel like if you're trying to attack a project, you should have an end goal in mind. You want to use it for something, not just for the sake of just learning it, I guess. It also makes things a lot more enjoyable. For example, maybe I'm trying to design a product that needs a power supply, which I am not doing right now. Maybe I need a buck power supply for such a thing, then yes, I'll be like, oh yeah, you know, just in time, I wanna go and use that. Given the fact that I don't have a need to use a buck power supply right now, I am not gonna integrate in anything. So therefore I really should not be evaluating a thing that makes buck power supply. So thanks for your offer anyway. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this unboxing and looking at this video card in detail. If you're interested in supporting this channel, I have an audible link down in the video description below where you can get a free audiobook. And if you don't like this audiobook or this service, you can cancel it before the subscription expires. You can still keep this audiobook for free. So it's just like a free book and you can help benefit this channel. I have a Patreon over here where you can get early access to my videos. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to my channel over here and click that bell icon next to that subscribe button so that you get a new notification whenever I upload a brand new video. Thanks for watching.